happen, there is no like deal. We thank you because of the way you have left from the beginning of this quarter, second quarter, to this 13th Sabbath day. You has been you and you alone. With you, we are nothing. We are thanking you for all the testimonies have been to us. I thank you for, for this day you have sanctified and made holy for your children to worship you. We are thanking you for all your mercies, for your loving kindness towards us. And at this hour, we are at your mercy, Lord Jesus. Pray that you have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, our trespasses, all that we have done during the week that are not pleasing you, O oh God. Pray that you wash us with that heat and that you make us to be acceptable to our worship. Lord, we call it all the all those who are going to be shed. Right from the school down to the divine power. We call everyone into your ear. We pray that you touch our lips. Sigh us all the holy use. We pray that you purify our heart this moment. We pray that you must be accepted in your sight. Lord in heaven, meet those who have come with health challenges before you. Lord, we pray that you touch with your healing. That, that balm of death will be a portion. That you massage every affected part. That we heal spiritually today. That we pray for all the speaking system, all the diseases that we are going to make use of. Take control of every city. Remove every distraction. Oh Lord, we worship you today. Bless the children. Bless the adults, bless you to in their various sets of worship. Bless your son and daughter, worshiping you the wild world. Father, be us and guide and direct all that we are going to do. Everything is done to the glory of your name. Lord, we thank you because we know that you are with us. Bless those who are online. Bless who are on site. Everyone who are worshiping with us via Zoom, Facebook, or via WhatsApp, via YouTube. Thank you, dear Lord, for being with us since we are paid with thanksgiving, believing that you will bless us mightily today. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath, everyone. How was your week? <laughs> we thank God for another wonderful Sabbath morning. On behalf of the leadership of the Sabbath school, I welcome you all to this wonderful Sabbath school today. I pray that as you have come today, the Lord whom you have come to see will meet you at the point of your knees in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, welcome, how do you do? Welcome, welcome, how do you do? Happy to see you, happy. Welcome, welcome, how do you do? Happy to see you, my friend. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Akachi, are you on the line? Yes. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Our Bible reading is taken from Genesis 47, 27. I read, So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Gazan, and they had possessions there and grew and multiplied exquisitely. May God bless this reading. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank um, Akachi for that reading. And today we have the last lesson for this quarter. Many of us have been here 
from the beginning till now. And we have looked at so many things concerning Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, and uh, also Joseph. Today, mainly, we are going to focus on Joseph. One thing I want to draw our attention to is if you are asked one thing that you know this quarter, what will you say? So think about that as we go deeply into our study today. What will you say concerning Abraham, concerning Isaac, concerning Jacob and Esau, and concerning Joseph? Is there anything that is relevant to you that you can apply today in your life as we progress in our lesson today? So I want to invite everybody to uh, bow down, let's pray, and seek the presence of the Lord to guide us through our lesson today in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, we humble ourselves before you now. We are empty of your knowledge as we study our scriptures now, but we pray that you endow us from above, give us the wisdom, give us the understanding, guide and control whatever we are going to talk, say, and discuss now. Let us speak out something that will be beneficial to us in this lesson, this last lesson of the quarter. And may all glory and honor be thine as we apply these things into our lives. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Our memory text, which was well read by our brother, Genesis 47, 27. So Israel, there may be some confusion now because of the names, okay? So Israel dwelt in the land of Jacob, land of Egypt, sorry, in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. I don't know whether the O'Hearers are online. I'll ask you some question. Who is this Israel we are talking about now? The Israel we are talking about. It says, so Israel dwelt in the land of e Egypt. Who is this Israel? Yeah. We know that the name of Jacob was chained to Israel, right? And along the line, you know, towards the uh, last part of our lesson, we we'll discover that all of them moved to Egypt. So, it plays a dual role here. Jacob moved. Him and his family also moved to the country called Goshen. I understand that right here in, in New York, we have a place called Goshen. You see, and they had possessions and grew and they also multiplied exceedingly. That tells us that there was multiple blessings they received multiple blessings. Take your mind back to the promise given to Abraham when he was living. I will multiply. Your descendants will be like this. I keep wondering how these things keep happening, keep happening. You see the progression, you see the, the blessing happening one by one, which means the fulfillment of God's word also happened. So what God says, he will also accomplish it. Israel in Egypt, that's the uh, caption of our study. And if you look at the picture they have before us, you see an old man there. And what is he doing? I see his hand being placed on some people, right? And other people around him. So as we go deep into our lesson, we also discover some other things that happened. That's Genesis. We'll draw our minds now to the book of Genesis, chapter 46. But before we go to 46, I want us to read 45, verse 24. Genesis 45, verse 24. Yes, 45, 24. Then he sent his brothers away. And as they departed, he said to them, Do not quarrel on the way. <laughs> Who was saying that? Who said that? Joseph. Joseph. Why did he, what do you think? Why did he tell the brothers, do not quarrel on the way? <laughs> These were his 
older brothers, right? Do not quarrel on the way. This was when he sent them back to go and get their father, right? And he's telling them, look at that little guy, telling them, no, come here. We're not Lord Lock. Why? Why did he tell them that? Our uh, teacher. Yes. I think he knows his brothers, and uh, you know what has been happening. They might go on the road and start blaming each other. You know, those things, those arguments on the road, because you know that they have not forgiven themselves before. I mean, yet they're still blaming themselves for what happened. So on the road, they might be blaming each other why they're going through what they're going through, then that could be a source of quarrel. I think Joseph understands that. Thank you. I think he answered that very well. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Uh, I was, you know, surprised. It drew my attention. I was, whoa, this guy, <laughs> look at the kind of advice he's giving to his older brothers. Now, let's look, look at the departure. Uh, 46, uh, Genesis chapter 46. The question here is, what is the significance of Jacob's departure from Canaan? No, I was just asking the question. What is the significance of the uh, departure from Canaan? In this area now, we see uh, Jacob now leaving finally, leaving Canaan, going to Egypt. Remember, Abraham also left his comfort area, right? and went to a land that he didn't know about. Now it has come to Jacob. All of them moving. You see, I, you see everything being repeated again, happening again, the movement. Um, 46, okay, read from verse, from verse 8. Verse 8. Now these are the names of the descendants of Israel who came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons, Reuben, Jacob's first son. Okay. Okay. When you read the whole of it, you will find that there are many, the generation, all of them. The Bible says there were how many that left Egypt, that went to Egypt? 70. 70. 67 of them. 67, fine. Yes, uh, another area says 75, another area says, but it was about that, okay? <laughs> Let's bring it at a compromise. They left, all of them left and went to Egypt. That was a large number. And this was a nation, the movement of a nation. Can you see this being repeated again? Israel, the look at it as the children of Israel moving to Egypt. Later, we'll also see them, after 400 years, right? We'll see them also moving, <laughs> moving back. Movement happening. A movement is happening. Adventism is a movement. Things happening around us, they are movement. And the Lord was with them, all these great people, this great nation. The Lord kept the way the Lord kept the Israelites as they were joining, leaving Egypt. So also the Lord led these people, this number. If you read, you see all the families, their children, their livestock. They went with everything to Egypt, and the Lord protected them. Yeah. I don't know if I can really find the answer to the question that we're trying to answer. What is the significance of Jacob's departure mm -hmm. from Canaan to Egypt? Okay. Um, if you look at it, we have seen all that they have gone through, all the troubles and all these you know, things you know, that are associated with, the, with Jacob himself, his children, they are killers, they are sellers, they are everything. And the Lord is now preparing them 
because this is the path that Christ will come through. They are going to Egypt to actually be trained to be really civilized in such a way that Christ will come through them. So I just want us to bring our minds to that. They are just not going to Egypt to have a vacation, but the Lord is preparing them to inherit the promised land. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that contribution. I want us to look at, um, I just want to pick out some things in, in, in that uh, 46. 46, 33 to 36. Let's read that. 46 from verse 33 to 36. Okay. And Pharaoh. From 33, read 33 to the end. And Pharaoh calls you and says, what is your occupation? You shall say, your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth, even up to now, both we and our fathers, in order that you may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. Yeah. Why did he tell them to, you know, explain to the king about their occupation? Why was that relevant or significant? Uh, teacher. I think you said. Yes, okay, for... Hold on. Hold on. I mean, it's, it's a justification for them to be in the best land because in the land where there are green pastures for the sheep, because Goshen is, a, a, is an area that has a lot of fields that the animals can feed. And secondly, Pharaoh doesn't like um, um, chef, um, shepherding, right? That's not their occupation, so he doesn't like them. So he wants them to be in a separate part of the land. Okay, thank you. Any other person? Yeah, despite the fact that they did not like uh, farming out, you know, shepherding, right? At the time, the whole idea was that so that they would not like put more attention to them because they didn't like that kind of, you know, occupation. So once they, they had that, it's like, okay, leave them alone. So it was a psychological, yeah. you know, thinking. On your ZZ. Go ahead, Man, go ahead. Um, HM Ladi Menten and Bola is uh Joseph Amranu Muni Oma Praland Egypt Abielo Abwa Joseph Possibility Eze Feru Eze Na one no be the no to go and get with the better people. May grow with the yellow one. You walk one here in the Wagatanga mixer up. So Joseph from Petrolisio Toto. Magua wara and Egypt Hamana Bebe Aguakata. Yeah, so Unu no iche. So that Unara wola ba aga ide when me kori kota ngi me vos yunu. Kambo to gwe mjiri wate. Okay, thank you so much. That... The same thing, just to prevent them getting involved with the idols and then falling into temptation. Okay, thank you for all those contributions. Are the other one wanting something to yeah, contribute? Yeah, I was also going to say that they they didn't come to stay. Uh, Joseph, you know, made them to, you know, give Pharaoh the answer that they have not come to stay. Uh, if they get permanent secretaries or ministers, then they will be stuck in Egypt. But they are just in their way, and they can live at any time. Thank you so much for all those contributions. Um, or do, any other thing that we have in that first part of the lesson that somebody want to bring up before we move ahead? Ah, yes. I'm challenge I the Goshen so that they don't mix up with that pagan nation. How are they going to see the light in us? So that they can also shine. Or there are my hair, what I'm going to do, and things are, and things are. Can somebody help me a little bit? So, did we hear what she said? If you isolate yourself in a particular area, how will your light shine to others? How will? Are you not going to associate with them again? Onyo zizi. Yes. Lo mbere wo lo bochiri wo ebe biado andron doro chichi. 
Bea be yala politics, no li mo boda. Afuta fola de rawa solated. Chetakwala, ferro. Mm, si oh, ma bu onde ozuzatru. Le kuzatru unde kem, le kuzen igwe, igwe, anuman molile. Unu le kata onu. Oba matunda puta igwatura wo putara umu jacob. What will happen then when we call it a bit? Not in the sense we the other door or chichi. The kind in the book won't hallo chichi boo or chichi. That grave gave bang one, bang one. We are got to bag up. So can Bumi Joseph and the Raji prevent or before Lumre were isolated? They were not isolated, they were missing with people. I think I gave good unity daily free. Up a matin, they knew we were Thank you so much. Yeah, um, teacher. Uh huh. According to what my sister asked, how would they bring out their light? How would they shine? Um, when the man the butcher, if Mlobi Joseph, one he wanted them to be where they will be shielded from the idolatries of the Egyptian. However, according to what Madam said, they were also Pharaoh saw what is in them and trusted his life stops with them. Secondly, remember, as soon as Abraham landed and saw Pharaoh, he began his prophetic um, message. He, he remember that he didn't say king, long live the king, but he assumed the prophetic role and did what? Blessed, blessed Pharaoh in the name of God. So already he has started shining uh, over there and spreading the word of God. Okay, thank you so much. We, despite the fact that they, they were given a particular place, Goshen, um, a land I believe is very fertile, but then they will still um, associate with the people. By the light they show, others will get to know about them. And I think they live a fruitful life over there, and the Lord blessed them. In fact, the Lord was with them, according to the scriptures, just as we read. So we are moving on how Jacob settled now in Egypt. When you read uh, chapter 47, you will see Jacob settling, Joseph welcoming them, and uh, presenting them before King the Pharaoh, right? Yes. Um, let us read Deuteronomy 17, verse 16. Deuteronomy 17, 16 says, right. The king, moreover, must not acquire great numbers of horses for himself or make the people return to Egypt to gain more of them. For the Lord has told you, you are not to go back that way again. Yeah, I want to read something that we have in our lesson. It says, it's interesting how, despite all that Jacob had been told about Jesus being alive in Egypt, the Lord still gave him visions of the night and in them commanded him to leave. When we read 47, you see that the Lord also appeared to Jacob and encouraged him. Jacob leaves the land of promise for, of all places, Egypt, which later becomes associated with the one place that God's people do not want to go. That is a big thing that we cannot finish discussing here today, how Egypt, a place that they should not go, that was where they went, and the Lord also <laughs> encouraged and supported that. However, in the lesson, they says Joseph brought five of his brothers before Pharaoh. How many were his brothers? 11. 11. Why did he choose five to come before Pharaoh? What do you think? Why did he choose five to come before Pharaoh? Yeah, what do you think? Why, why would he do that? He probably thought of... Oh, sorry. I mean, there should be representative to represent the people of Israel to speak as to advocate for them, you know, and make their, their needs known to Pharaoh other than Joseph. 
So if Joseph is doing that, Joseph, it will be like just Joseph is showing favoritism. So it's better for the people to come before Pharaoh and present their needs. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Hem vulo bimbula Joseph amnala wukom. Oma ala agwa welele. Even though akukonsa kaforanyi, kaforanyi handop up ogwera. Lucho bim, it could be inferred lo the best out of them. One, mande unwere nkuwoku, mande unwere izi, ki ime mwa. Given the fact la yera wola abe mela mwembo, Omana landobu so opere waka for the best. Obo tumchere. Okay. Are there other three contribute then? We are moving. Okay, let's read Genesis uh, 47, verse 6 and 7. 47, 6 and 7. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the first of the land, make thy father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen, let them dwell. And if thou knowest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. Seven. And Joseph brought in Jacob, his father, and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Uh, two things that I want to bring out there. Pharaoh now requested, is there any among your brothers that has special ability? creative, and expert has, you know, some special qualities to do certain things. Is there any among them? Look at the favor they have also received from the king, Pharaoh. And then you, we can see Jacob now blessing the king. Have we been in a situation where we find ourselves before authorities and we bless them. Authorities at work, authorities in our community, authorities in the government. Yeah, yeah, on your cousin. Um, uh, uh, I want to make a situation. Uh, you know, in the lesson, they, uh, they say so much about Joseph, I mean, Jacob blessing the king, blessing Pharaoh. And uh, I don't want it to be an argument. Get out my personal opinion. Obrola Joseph, Gadula, Obrola Joseph, Jacob, Joseph, Ngachawe, Ngaude, he put that. I got fly blessed. That's why bless you, Pharaoh. More than my own situation where the parents say that a graduation, my way or something, my wedding, and then my way, ah, I borrow, I borrow the parents. I got to say, boss, yeah, Lord, you know, you know, maybe in born or school, yeah, they take care of that, take care of him, yeah, what matter. And he was always speaking nice of that boss. So the parents, um, what do we do? They were very happy. Which is a, a form of blessing. For all you have done. Which is also what Joseph did. I mean, Jacob did. I don't think like Jacob made anything this so extraordinary. And I don't, I don't believe, can I be personally, that Lobo, a fulfillment of uh, uh, pro, uh, prophecy, see that uh, he, they will make, God will make him, a, uh, the, through him, all nations will be blessed. No, to me, you know what I'm talking argument, because I can have my personal opinion. Because of when Pharaoh men why Joseph, when the condition was changing. Uh, teacher. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Above my, my friend who crossed me to La Akaloba Miak. My, my contribution on Bo Esera de me Pharaoh's say, Odomunia special skill. Right. Yes. 
You know, oh yeah, but who's a man, my guy, and got up. Joseph has brought a lot of blessings to Egypt. Uh, his dreams, the, um, um, the, the, the interpretation of the dreams and the fulfillment. You see, Joseph has a special skill of um, revealing dreams and interpreting dreams. So this man, Pharaoh, seeing that his, his, his uh, brothers is here now. Now, because of Joseph, he is also asking for special skill from that stock that has blessed his nation to see if there's somebody, anybody with special skill or God has, give, has given special skill that we contribute to the welfare of his nation. I think that's what I think in that way. Right, Ed. Uh, I just want to add also, um, uh, uh, Pharaoh was looking at uh, economic part of it. For example, today, if you want to go to countries like Canada as immigrants, they expected you to be skilled. If you're not skilled, they will not approve your visa. Why? Because they want their country to develop. They want you to contribute in the society. So it could have been what he was looking at. Why making this request? Thank you. And I think it's, it's a good thing, right? For us to be skilled in one thing or the other. Opportunities can come, you know, and uh, we capitalize on that. However, we need to be a blessing to others. The Bible says we should pray for those in authority. There are people, it's not only those, right here, I just want to bring out praying for those in authority. We need to pray for them, okay? For God to intervene. Uh, our country, Nigeria, is a case in point, right? We need to, though it might take a long time, but God will surely intervene one way or the other. Just like the Israelites too. Imagine how long they stayed in Egypt after, right? You think they weren't praying? Mm -hmm. But it happened one day. It took a long time. Some lost hope, but it happened. So we should also pray. Whether the country is going well or not, we should pray for those in authority, okay? Now, Jacob, they have settled there, and Jacob is now old, and he's about to die. He made a request. Verse 28 to 31. Yeah, of 47, verse 28 to 31. Twenty-eight, and Jacob lived in the land of Egypt. Oh, sorry, oh, all right, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years. So the length of Jacob's life was one hundred and forty-seven years. When the time drew near that Israel must die, he called his son Joseph and said to him, "Now, if I have found favor in your sight, please put your hand under my tie." and deal kindly and truly with me. Please do not bury me in Egypt, but let me lie with my fathers. You shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. Why did Jacob make that special request? One, any other person? Actually, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And Abu, Abu was sojourners in the land of Egypt. Just like us today. Many of us today would like to be buried at home. It's just a similar thing. Okay. The promised land. Is it, is it on? It's the promised land, I said. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say, it's the promised land. I mean, he knows the promise that God has promised Abraham up to him. He knows uh, that this is where he buried his wife. And then the question we also want to ask is, why did he insist? Why did he buy a lot? 
a plot, you know, to bury his wife. So he knows this is where his descendants, many years to come, will eventually return here, and he wants his carcass to be buried there. Right. If we remember Abraham, he bought a land in Machpelah. He bought a cave, you know, and um, I keep wondering when you read this, how Jacob also remembered that, that they've, you know, Abraham passed it on to Isaac, Isaac passed it on to Jacob, and they, keep, they kept those things. They didn't forget, they didn't deviate for it. it, it, it I, my attention always comes to that. I say, wow, these people, they maintain that tradition. So let's go uh, to 40. Yeah, somebody want to say something? Peter, that land, promised land, Canaan, has a spiritual meaning, not only to them. However, in their own time, it, will, it has a physical meaning, which is there is a land called Canaan. And it follows the blessing of the Lord and the gospel. The same thing for us today. We are still hoping for, for that, that promised Canaan land. And that is what we are looking up for. Not that physical promised land uh, again. I think Jacob understand that, even though what he was looking at that time was a physical land. Okay, thank you. Let's move forward to 48 now. Um, okay, quickly, go ahead. Jacob, or on whom before your lanya, whom I'm not here. You do long way, I see ye chetalabo bend in one year, my guy, dear Yuba. Go, Kuma Mole. Okay, apart from there, what I can say is this. Apart from there, what I can say is this. Leah was the real wife of Jacob. I think Jacob understands that. Any other wife, even though uh, last lock and Rachel lied, do you know that he buried Rachel on the road on the way? He should have said, okay, carry Rachel and go there and bury her. But he, he chose to bury the wife, the ordained wife, Mo so Jacob recognized this is my real wife. That's what I think. Okay, we have we have understood that. I got you uh, chapter forty-eight. Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. And remember, from what our sister read, Jacob is now very old and he's about to die. And in chapter 48, the news came to Joseph. Your father is old now. And then um, Joseph decided to go and see the father, right? Why going? He went with his two sons. Ginimne, what happened there? Jacob, Jacob, um, Jacob blessed Ephraim and Manasseh, and um, you know the bless the blessing he bestowed on them is fulfillment. Is the prophet that came to fill because their lineage was the lineage of Jesus Christ. So it came to, you know, Joseph at this point, bless them, knowing that through them, Jesus will be born. I think he crossed his hand too, just the same way um, um, the, the father, right? That's the same way the father gave, uh, did I say wrong blessings? Switch the blessings, right? So um, Jacob switched the hand too. And I think um, in the lesson, um, Joseph called his attention to it. And he said, um, don't worry about it. I know what I'm doing. So I think it's a repetition of what has been happening in their lineage. I think he's continued like that. I don't know. When somebody said, lineage, 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 
Omo Joseph, or Bolan, Jamon, Jesus, Unuba Mamma, a blessing. Okay. 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 Let me let me let me add my look at it. Jacob adopted the two sons of Joseph as his own because his first and second son um he mentioned it Simeon. Abosimian, they came up. Ruben. 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 So bringing shame to Jacob, because of that, Jacob did not forgive them that sin. So he removed them as being first and second. You remember, mother, a place with Omo Joseph, Matlabwa. He took them, they took the position of first and second son. That's why he adopted them and gave them the blessing. The way he blessed them, he blessed them in a traditional way in which those people at that time bless people if they don't want to give the first blessing to the first son. So he crossed his hand, give the junior the blessing that's supposed to be for the senior and the senior the blessing that's supposed to be for the junior. And this is what should have happened between Esau and Jacob. If Jacob had allowed it for God to play it out, that somehow, some way, Jacob was going to receive that blessing. So, in essence, what you are saying that when Joseph drew the attention of the father to what was happening, and the father said, Yes, I know what I'm doing. You want to say that Jacob knew what he was doing? He knew what he was doing, it was intentional. HM Lahme, the simple answer, Buddha, Jacob blessed as the spirit led. God was with him. And the main blessings was to bring Joseph to take the place of Reuben and Simeon. So Abu Hemreno. HM Law, Rochineka, I am Okay, Joa. My dear, I always say in our lessons, let us bring it home in our own traditions in, since we are following the Bible so that we know if we're on the wrong way and then redirect ourselves. And one of such problems now and in Igbo land, and it is abomination, I think. Mangwa pram nondu. Osoto pram obokoso. But from the Bible, we can read it now. So what are we learning from these things? Because it's confusing me. Anna say I may hold two questions. I have ochi the queen may cause Kabu one. Another one on chocolate jumbo. Is it good now? We have seen promise him and Madhan is in Nigeria. A father of the Sima, my Evlalos, who won't want me to be a So, of the good, can you wear such rationale? Jacob, only civil liar. Can you give follow a hanging web? These are my two questions, please. 
Adwenge, sir, the last one first, before we go to the first question. Okay, I, my take on this is that, um, remember from what we are saying, Abraham, when he started his journey, it was a decision he made to buy that cave. And he promised that Ogebu, a burial place for his people. Okay, you want to? Yeah, I wanted to say that um, I think somebody answered that question in this lesson, that the, the Canaan land that we are looking at today is the one in heaven. Eben land. We're all expecting to go to heaven. That's the Canaan land that we should be aiming to go. Where we are buried now, I don't think it's significant. It is that journey that we are partaking in that That's we are expecting at the end of the day, we will all go to heaven. That's, That's our not, destination. That's not what I understand. Okay, Matubi Yala. Go do you on the right track. Um Sister Dak. Yes. Or dig by Jacob and then I am Kotarala Jacob on Selo Gabian Gagini Webagili Mad of an individual. Bible, I didn't I am Kotara Chineke in Tionia say, Onya Wono Vulare Obekewo. Come Ben with that family. A tradition. Of tradition with the this um Abraham and his children. Chetakwala boa ni wolani. Chetakwala mbagra gili imonu Jacob. Lande matu no to make of ongani. It was a surprise to them. Which means obo something in the common everywhere. Okay. So I am going to make generalize the Bible on this because loud dunye or or to family men. I am not willing to get through me whether more the right, more the wrong. Or the English matter. Christ in Bia. Oya hunge no. O problem metra. Oya no one in choro. Oya hunge. Thank you so much. The first question. Are you actually to online? Ojero grade. Um, what happened to Ephraim, um, Ephraim and Manasseh, the younger, like Nga Birabiri, Ishi Opera, Opera, Ade Nga Baka, Ade Kwa Yon Hon Wetana? Too far do I need to go home by Nga Duleli Gwa Nga Jwa Chine Neke? No, that, that, chere, 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 ati, ti, yon. Okay. Bible. I think I oh, hold it, hold it. I think the simple and short answer is that the Lord sees us even before we are born. It's God that was directing Jacob, and God directed Abraham. God directed Isaac in everything they do. Anytime they sought God, the Lord gives them direction. Um, God saw Joseph right before he was born. Um, selling him to the Ishmaelites, throw him, throwing him into the pit. You know, every hatred that was, you know, poured out to this young man did not stop the blessings that the Lord had for him. And, we can, and, we, and we can see that now, even at this point in time, that Joseph, the, uh, the seeds of Joseph are actually the ones that are replacing the four sons of, of, of Jacob. So God sees us right when we are young or even before we are born. There is no amount of hatred that can, you know, uh, that can change that. Okay, thank you. I buy that idea. General um, statement, that now, um, in this situation now, this is a father blessing the sons. Um, it's not about inheritance of Jacob's property or anything. So Jacob is just bl giving blessing. And um, I mean, like my brother said, blessings comes from God. Because 
So, oh, depend on the onion tree. Ketake. I could remember when my grandfather passed away. He, in, by then, um, I only had Kelechi. I was married. He invited all his grandchildren. Um, so there were two yams he kept for. One, uh, he kept America. Also here in America. So one, no be allowed to So unfortunately, the girl couldn't come. So when I came, he gave me the yam and he offered a special blessing. So. Move one day, so things just happen like that according to the will of God. We cannot just explain everything. Thank you so much. God directs our paths and He will continue to lead us. So, we're going to see how God directed a part of Joseph as we move forward. 48 verse 15. I Goya, that's the blessing that was given to Joseph. Okay, now Predestination. For the 8 verse 15. Let's read that. Oh. Yeah, 48 verse 15. And he blessed Joseph and said, The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life long to this day. 16. The angel who has redeemed me from all evil. Bless the boys, and in the name, let, let's, no, and in them, let my name be carried on, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Thank you so much. This special blessing that Jacob gave to Joseph, he also blessed all his sons. I'm going to tie two of them together. Um, Obirola, when you read 49, you see the blessings. But then, what's the significance of uh, Jacob blessing his sons, blessing his grandkids. The Bible is telling us to lay our hands on our children mm -hmm. and pray for them. Yeah. Lay ble blessings on them. Pronounce blessings on them. We need to do that. As priests of the home, as mothers of the home, gather them together and lay your hands on them and pray over them. Let our mouth, the mouth that has pronounced blessing, not pronounced curse again. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for bringing that, bringing that out. So let's pronounce blessing on our children. That is very important. I want us to read 49 verse. Excuse me, uh, teacher. I think I see... In what Jacob is doing here, I see blessing and I see cursing also. I don't know if you see that clearly. Um, Brother Nemeka, do you see uh, that? Um, I want to say something there. I, I didn't see curse. Yes. I, I want to say, say something there. Okay. Brother, go ahead. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is that um, when Jacob was blessing his children, he didn't fail to point out the evil some of them did. He blessed all of them according to what they are going to do and going to be in future. As you see in the place of Judah, he said, Medisetta not depart from you. What is that? A sign of authority, kingship. And if you go along, you see that it is through the line of Judah that all the king, King David and um, King Solomon, it is through his line that all this king came to the ultimate kingship of Jesus Christ. So kings will never depart from that. So um, Jacob was spiritual when he was giving those blessings. And he didn't fail to tell Simeon and Reuben their faults. And he also blessed them according to, accordingly. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that actually depriving them of their 
actual right of that blessing that they should have inherited from them is indirectly a cause. And um, I just want to see it that way, uh, because if something is due me, and now you're taking it to, uh, to a nephew of mine, um, I think indirectly, um, if I'm not getting it, um, it is because of what I did and indirectly is a cause in, in my own, uh, own understanding. Okay, yeah. uh, you know, some people receive uh, a little sanction for what they did. Look at the, the Queen of England. What happened to his first child, Charles? Charles did something that denied him the kingship. Instead, it was taken to his grandson. I think that's the same thing. Yeah, one important thing. The consequences of sin is death. So, Abu Hena Kosun, the man had a bush in Ibo. Handura mad, they have in here. They were in your nose. One of my attract problem, envy, killing, and all those. So, but I don't know how we will reconcile this. We are not saying that what is due you should not be given to you. It should be given to you. But in this area now, this is a divine thing that was happening. Just look at Jacob. Take a moment and look at the life of Jacob, how he started. It wasn't easy. His life wasn't good when he started, right? But look at the end of it. All that he was saying, it was so prophetic. Pronouncing blessing, correct blessing. I can see God guiding him here, giving him instruction, giving him the message, what he was saying. I, there is a deep connection here between Joseph, um, Jacob, and God. There, there is a connection in what was happening at the end of his life, which means how we start in life doesn't matter so much, but the end plays more um, importance here. Because when you see the end of Jacob, he was able to bless them, and he died peacefully in his death. So the more we study our lesson, the more we learn. And in my the Bible, the Bible is for instruction, it's for discipline, it's for us to correct our ways. So okay, now I am Mutala or Jacob Fugana Flair blessing. So today, my embada, my embara, the most important thing is that. We have to ask ourselves, how is our life? We have to have that relationship with God. I believe, had even seen um, Simon and Levi did the right thing before God or did what they're supposed to do. Um, so, Abu, a lesson to us today for us to examine our life as individual. We are on our way to heaven. Heaven knows no first son. It knows no second son. It knows no old or young. It knows no woman or man. It's a race of individual race. We have to examine our life now that we are alive. And, you know, ask God to help us. Amen. Yeah. yeah um, I... Excuse me. Excuse me, teacher. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I'm um, sorry. I don't speak Igbo and I hope I'm not going to be Go ahead. what has already Go ahead, please. been said. But one thing I've come to understand from this study lesson is every step of the way with the creation of man to Jacob to his children, God has always had purposes. Now let's take it back to the Garden of Eden. God had a purpose to create humans, to share life with humans. But then Satan along the line came and twatted his purpose. Now in the case of Jacob now blessing his grandsons, God had a purpose. There were meant to be 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob had been called Israel, right? But well, now Jacob's sons were in the process of twatting God's purpose. If we also think of the fact that God had a plan for Joseph, but when we talk about things like predestination, which is something I don't believe God does, Joseph was then sold to slavery in Egypt. God manipulated that situation and he made that situation end in praise. So now in Jacob's case of blessing his grandsons, God had an aim, which was to bring Jesus Christ to the earth to reunite us with him. That was the aim. The plan was about to be twatted when Jacob's sons did wrong, but then God immediately replaced his sons with his grandsons, which was also 
to bring about the end game of bringing Jesus Christ to the earth. So when we talk about our traditions, God will defy our traditions once he has a purpose in mind. Okay, thank you so much. We're going to move forward, please. Uh, hold it. We, we want to draw three things that we studied in our lesson this quarter in the book of Genesis. Let's look at it. One is that the hope that Israel will return to the promised land. Two, and this one is very important for each and every one of us, that God will turn evil into good. And my question comes there in Genesis 50, is it 18 or 19? Why did the brothers of Joseph, after Jacob died, why did they come back to Joseph again? And this was after about 20 years or more. It's more than that. Why did they come back to him again and say, please? Why did he come back at this later time? Why did they come back to plead? They are still feeling guilty. Yeah, they have not forget, uh, forgetting everything that happened. And they have not forgiven themselves. Yes, I would say it's for guilt. And also they felt that Joseph has not completely forgiven them. So they were still feeling it, the need to go back to him and finally see if they will bring that to rest. We, we hang on to uh, unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we kind of get stuck. You know, once we have committed something, even when we have been forgiven, we hang on to it. We keep on staying there. But the Lord has already forgiven us. Instead of us moving forward, we still we get stuck in that it happens to us today and we have to be careful about that. Yeah, um, I think um, the string that tied them together as brothers is no longer there, which is Jacob. Now Jacob is dead. And they felt maybe Joseph was just being good to them because just for the father's sake. Now the father is no more. So they were afraid. Probably Joseph will also come back to help them and, um, and revenge. But not knowing that Joseph has forgotten about him. Any other reaction online? Yeah, uh, um, teacher, I think that anytime somebody forgives you, if you didn't forgive yourself and continue hanging on on your guilt, the result is nothing but it becomes so critical, so judgmental and assumptive. And that is what happened here. They assumed that now our father is dead. Maybe our brother is going to deal with us. So they didn't see, they didn't see that Joseph have really forgiven them. Even all the things Joseph have been doing for them, you know, meaning that they're still hanging on according to their, on that, their guilt. And when you hang on on your guilt, if you assume a lot of things about somebody, oh, more dribble, more similar to a boat, I'm going to Any other person uh, yeah, just conclude? I just wanted to say before Jacob left uh, uh, Canaan, you know, to Egypt, um, he was invited and God also appeared to him, you know, asking him to go. Uh, the invitation wasn't enough. God appeared to him. So God has a purpose for actually making him, because that was going to be difficult for him to leave the promised land to Egypt of all places. But God still appeared to him. I think that was important, you know, for us to know. I also wanted to mention that Jacob mourned for 22 years for the death of Joseph. And he kept on mourning because remember here, we've established that the devil wanted to thwart God's plan. And this is what God planned. And he mourned for so long for Joseph. And the invitation to come to Egypt was just an easy invitation for him. So take home message. Our lesson today talks about restoration and more about forgiveness mm -hmm. and also the promised land. 
Something has been broken. The Lord has promised to restore it. The Lord has forgiven us. And he has promised us a special land where we are going to. That is our lesson today. And I pray that the Lord will, as he was all the way, each step of the way he was with Abraham. He was with Isaac. He was with Jacob. He was with Joseph. That the same promise, the same covenant he made, that also was fulfilled. That we ourselves do the covenant that we have with our Lord, that he will fulfill it in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this beautiful lesson. We thank you for guiding us through this quarter's lesson. The deep things that we have learned, let us keep to them. Guide us even as we march into the next quarter, in which we have also another beautiful lesson to learn. We thank you for your members, your sons and daughters who have gathered today. We pray that blessings from above will abide with them today. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Elder Rick. The Lord bless your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we will move straight to our Sabbath school experience offering. I hope you know you that are we done hard? No, no, no. You're happy, and you know you say amen. Amen. We are in the house of the Lord. We should be rejoicing and we should be smiling. May the Lord bless you as you support the Sabbath school by dipping your hand down in your pocket and support the affairs of the Sabbath school. Can you please project our online giving platforms? By now, we all know how to give. We have the Zelle account number, 929-777-1752. You can also give via the app. As you do so, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. While you do that, we will hear a song from Mrs. Akogo. Give us the chance. Tabasco is my suffering. Give us the e. Give us the e. Give us the e. Give us the you. Give us the you. Give me another S. Give me another S. The spirit of Jesus, the spirit of Jesus, the King of Kings, the King of Kings, and Lord of Law, and Lord of Law. Many are in prison, oh, many are in mortuary. But you are here. Let's give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Oh, give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Happy Sabbath, Church. The song I'm about to sing is titled Sheltered in the Arms of God. I feel the touch. Often so kind and tender, they lead me in paths that I must run. 
I have no fear when my Jesus walks beside me. For I'm sure God save the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise. They won't worry me, for I've shared a safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not of it shall harm me, for I've shared a in the arms of God, soon I shall hear the call from heaven's water. Come on, my child, is the last man you must run. I'll fall asleep. And waking God's new heaven, shelter set within the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise, they won't worry me, for I'm shelter set within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not of him shall harm me. For I'm shattered in the arms of God. So let the stars rage high, the dark clouds rise. They won't worry me, for I'm shelter safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not of it shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in. For I'm shattered in, for I'm shattered in the arms of God. I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, brethren. Happy Sabbath to you. I know today is our 13th Sabbath. And um, we are going to finish it next Sabbath. We are going to collect the 13th Sabbath offering next week. Uh, for those in the physical church, they see a lot of people traveled, including myself. So our 13th Sabbath offering, and I ask teachers to continue collecting until next week. We are going to announce the results and know who is going to keep the cup. Thank you so much. Uh, what a wonderful lesson we are today. We are ending our study on Genesis. And before I do that, I want to thank Elder Uriaco for leading out in, a, in our lesson today in a very, very short notice. So I pray blessings on him and his family as he labor, labor for God. May the almighty God continue to bless and labor for him too in Jesus' name. And uh, really, I can't wait to see the senior react on that resurrection morning and shake his hand for raising 
soldiers for Christ. Yes, today we are ending our study in the book of Genesis. What a wonderful lesson. We have taken a lot from that book, the beginning, the book of the beginning. You see, in that um, we see God's love in, in humanities in spite of our mess up. He still loves us. In spite of our mess up and fell falls, he works redemptively in each of our lives. In Abraham, a man who was afraid to trust God, transformed and was willing to sacrifice his only son of his old age in obedience to God's command. Jacob, the supplanter, a dubious, conniving man, transformed. He became a man that wrestled with God and prevailed. In Judah, what do we see? See a greedy man who sold his brother Joseph to slavery, transformed, become a slave himself for a brother to go free, volunteered to be a substitute for Benjamin's, Benjamin's punishment, something that Christ became for us. See, God is working in all our lives to transform us, to reconcile us to himself. The same God who uses our hardship, our suffering, to strengthen us and to bring good out of it. So many lessons in this the book of Genesis. This few I can pick up. And you see, in today's lesson, we see forgiveness, reconciliation, family reunion, and the importance of parents blessing their children. Father's blessing his children is very, very important, as Jacob demonstrated. So like one of my brothers said today, I still ask parents today, please do not cause your children, no matter how they provoke you. Instead, bless them. Because what we say, the blessings we give our children affects their life and their future. And I say, may God bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. So next week, we're going to start another series of story. Um, that's, uh, that is uh, the book of, um, no, it's not book. Uh, it's uh, titled Being in Crucible with Christ. So I invite all of us Saturday so that we start that series Saturday. And I pray that the Holy God, our Father in heaven, will give us strength and direct us as we enter into that study for the top quarter. May God bless and keep you in Jesus' name and have a pleasant Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Shall we rise as we close the Sabbath school with the use of SDH 6 33 when we all get to heaven? When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout over to him. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy, his and his grace. In the marshals, bright and blessed, he'll prepare us for a place when we all go to heaven. For then we'll rejoice in the will be when we all see Jesus, we will sing. I'm shot of a twin. 
Why we walk the big green pathway, clouds we love our spring, the sky. But when traveling days are over, no rush, shadow, no sigh. When we all go to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing. I'm shocked of victory. Lay rose, then be true, round, fell from trust in salvation. Now, day, just one glimpse of fame, him glory will the toys of life repel when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing a shout of victory when we all see Jesus. We will sing a shout of victory. Oh, what to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates we open, will shall tread a street of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing there will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, we will sing, I'm shocked of victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing I will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing, I'm shy of victory. Amen. Let's bow. Our most gracious and loving Father, we thank you so much for bringing us to the end of this quarter's lesson, the book of Genesis. Father, we are so grateful for all the experiences that we have learned from the book of Genesis. Lord in heaven, the song we just sang now is our song of victory. We can't wait to tread the streets of gold. Father in heaven, we are thanking you for the blessings of this Sabbath day which you have bestowed upon us, your children. Lord, in our course of study, the book of Genesis, we learned how you transformed Abraham, how you transformed Joseph, how you transformed Judah. Father, may that transformation come into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, you made your promises to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and you fulfilled it. May all your promises towards us, your children, be fulfilled in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord in heaven, even Sarah, you blessed Sarah with fruit of the womb. You made the promise and you fulfilled it. You even said that nothing is too hard for you. Father in heaven, today we are asking, oh God, are there those who have been asking you for that blessing of the gift of a child in their home? Lord, the way you bless Sarah, may you bless them today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Remember them, oh Lord. Father in heaven, help us, we parents, to bless our children also, the way Jacob blessed his children. May we not... Cause them, rather may we bless them. 
Father, in any way our children have wandered, Father, may, may you recover them back for us. May you win them back for us. We want to see our children like Joseph of old that we have just studied, that our children will make us proud, that our children will be a blessing to us. Thank you, Lord, because I know you can do it. There is nothing impossible with you. Lord in heaven, continue to abide with your church. Bless all worshipers today. Even as we go to the next segment of our worship, we pray that your glory descend upon us and be with us, take control of everything. Anything that will bring distraction, take it away from us. Father, dear God, bless our youths, bless our children, bless the adults, bless the aged, those who are weak, O oh Lord, strengthen them. Renew their strength, O oh Lord, today. There are many who are longing, desiring to be in church to worship you, but they can't because of health challenges. Oh Lord God, my Father, may you administer your healing upon them and make a way for them so that they will also partake in worshiping us here on site. Thank you, dear Lord. I know that you meet each and every one of us at the point of our need, at the end of our worship today, that we'll go home revived, We'll go home refreshed. We'll go home transformed. We'll go home because you are our redeemer. Continue to redeem us. Continue to grant us victory till you come to take us to that blessed home which you have gone to prepare for us. As we journey in a pilgrimage in this, in this land and to enter that uh, promised land which you have promised to give to all those who worship you. May it be our experience May we continue to dwell in your presence all the days of our lives till you come to take us to that blessed home. We have prayed with thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We thank you so much for joining us today in the Sabbath school. From um, wherever you've joined us from, those who are on site, we really appreciate you for coming. Those who have joined us online, we pray that the Lord will be with you. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you again next Saturday. May the Lord bless and keep you. We welcome you to Sabbath school. We are happy that you are here. Happy Sabbath day. Happy Sabbath day to you all. Till we meet again. Hello? Okay. Happy Sabbath. Next week will be church board meeting next Sabbath, and there will be church prayer and fasting. The family of China Doom and Sierra Ivandu wish to announce the birth of their daughter, Kaden Aubrey Chimdima Erundu, on Thursday, June 23rd. Thank you. Glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Don't treat me like they like they used to since I laid my burdens out. Friends, don't treat me like they like they used to since I 
Lay my burdens down. I feel better. So much, so much better since I lay my burdens down. I feel better. So much, so much better since I lay my burdens down. And we say glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. 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 Since I lay my burden down, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb, I've been redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb, I've been redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I am. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. The Lord and I, we both agree. The Lord and I, we both agree. The Lord and I, we both agree. I love him and he loves me. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. The devil and I, the devil and I, we don't agree. The devil and I, we don't agree. The devil and I, we don't agree. I hate him and he hates me. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. You can talk about me as much as you please. You can talk about me as much as you please. Talk about me as much as you please. I talk about you when I'm on my knees. All my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. And that's not all. And that's not all. There's more beside. And that's not all, there's more beside, and that's not all, there's more beside. I've been to the river and I've been baptized, all my sins I washed away, I've been redeemed. Um. Does anyone have a special hymnal? Three, three, four. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Here I raise my Ebenezer. Hitler, by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus saw me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he too rest. Rescue me from 
danger, interpose his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a feather, by me closer still to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for the cowards above. Five, five to wait, five to eight. A shelter in the time of storm. The Lord, the rock in him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever may be tied. A shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock, Mighty rock in a weary land, cool and shade on the burning sand. Faithful God for the pilgrim man, a shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night. A shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no foes affright. A shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cool and shade on the burning sand. Faithful God. A shelter in the time of storm. The raging storm may round us be. A shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave our safe retreat. A shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cool and shade on the burning sand. Faithful God for the pilgrim man, a shelter in the time of storm. O rock divine, O refuge dear. A shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our help forever near. A shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cool and shade on the burning sand. Faithful God for the pilgrim man, a shelter in the time of storm. Any special hymnal? Six to five. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher place. Then I have found, Lord, 
plant my feet on higher ground. Heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world, though Satan's dark. And me or her, for faith has caught the joyful sound, the songs of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost high and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I pray till heaven I found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I heard somebody say a number before, 216. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the time shall be no more. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is called up yonder, is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun let us talk of all his wondrous love and care 
Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. 529 under his wing. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under his wings, I'm safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempests are wide, still I can trust him. I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me, and I am his child. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under his wings, refuse in sorrow how the high yearning seems to its rest often when earth has no god for my healing there i can comfort and there i am blessed under his wings under his wings who from his love can sever. Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under his wings, what precious enjoyment there I'll lie high till I trials are o'er. Shelter protected, no evil can harm me. Resting in Jesus, I'm safe evermore. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wing, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Six, three, two. Six, three, two, until then. My, 
My heart can sing. This is the time to welcome ourselves to the house of God. We are using this opportunity on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Kezi Arundu, to welcome every one of us. Those that are worshiping with us from the Zoom, YouTube, Facebook, everywhere, both in Nigeria, 
you are highly welcome. Those here in our church, I welcome you people, especially with the God Almighty, the blessings of God, good health, everything good to be upon you people today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. May we Amen. continue to receive blessings from the God today in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, our formation of faith. Our formation of faith will be taken from Revolution 14, 6 to 7 from New King James Version. Then I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Call to worship. Our call to worship is taken from King James, Psalm 33, 20 to 22. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shell. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O oh Lord, be upon us, just as we hope in you. Amen. With this, I call the Church of God to worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Spirit of the Lord, there's a sweet, as precious on each face, and I know the field of presence. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly top, stay right to we feel us we your love and for his blessings we'll lift our hands in prayers we are at doubt we know that we are being revived when we shall leave this place. Preacher. Go ahead. Invocation, invocation. Shall we pray? Oh God, I want to thank you mightily this morning. I want to thank you for this wonderful Sabbath which you've given to us. At this time, Lord, we want to invoke your Holy Spirit. So that you come and take absolute control as you move into the next segment of our program today. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Shall we remain standing as we open the device service with the use of SDH 251? He leaves. I saw the living soul. 
Savior is in the house today. I saw the risen Savior is in the world today. I know that he is risen wherever the same. I see his hands of mercy, I hear his voice of chain. I'm just the time I need him, he's always there. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me, I long life not away. He lives, he lives, salvation to me, but you ask me how I know he lives. He lives, he lives my heart. In all the world around me, I see his love again. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy place. That day of his appearing, we come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me. I long life now ruin. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives, we leave my heart. He lives, we leave my heart. Rejoice, rejoice for Christ, voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. No other is so loved, so good I'm here. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Oh, he walks with me and talks with me. A long life now will He lives, he lives. Salvation to me, Pop. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives with my heart. Amen. Amen. Our Bible reading is going to be taken from 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1 and 8 and 9. I'm reading for a new, King, King, new international version. And it reads, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have his ministry, we do not lose our heart. Verse 8. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. May the Lord bless his reading in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, we we score where are ye like this? God will the mercy seem fair, fair to him. Our 
most gracious Father in heaven, the creator of mankind, the redeemer of Israel, the I am that I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Joseph, our own God, the El Shaddai, your sons and daughters have gathered today to worship you. We have come, we have responded to this great invitation. Both old and young, both male and female. Because of the great commission and our understanding that you are our father, the Lord of the Sabbath. So father, on this great day, we call upon your holy name. May thou hear us in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God Almighty, we thank you greatly for having led us this week. We thank you for Johnny mercies. We thank you for your healing mercies. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for the provision you have made for us. We thank you for peace. Above all, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we have come in unity as one by faith, calling upon the name of Jesus today. So, Father, if there any way we have sinned against you and against mankind, Lord, we pray that you forgive in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God Almighty, before you here are your sons and daughters, both those online and those present here in the church. We give you all honor and glory for the great number of people who are responding to this great call. We have come with several burdens on our heart, Heavenly Father. Please, Lord, before you, you know them all. You know the meditations of their heart, Heavenly Father. And I pray, may you intercede and answer their call and their cry today in Jesus' name. Father, we give you glory that even within this week, an addition was brought into this great church. That one of us gave birth to a bouncing baby. We give you all honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we want to open our hearts and thank you. Because we believe by faith that you will hear us today. Yesterday, Lord, your daughter was presented before the circle of brothers and sisters who were praying. And in unity today, Heavenly Father, we are lifting up this, your daughter, onto your heavenly throne. In our lesson today, one of the things, one of the takeaways is that you will turn all evil for good. You did it in the life of Joseph. When all hope was lost, any hope of survival was lost, but you turned things around. You are the God that turns things around for his own people. And so, Father, today we are praying, wherever that your daughter is now, Lord, may you turn things around for her in Jesus' name. Amen. You are a God that answered by fire. Four friends brought somebody before you on a Sabbath day. Father, you said when you saw their faith, you intervened and that man was healed. And so today we are bringing up this our sister who is in a desperate situation before you today. Father, look unto our faith. Even as little as it is, increase it and heal her in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone that has stepped into this place, Lord, let them not go without your blessing. Let them not go without you answering their prayers. Are there those present here who are sick, who have come with one burden or the other? Oh, Father, as you move around, blessing people on this great day, remember them and answer them in Jesus' name. Be in our midst today as we worship you. May your name be lifted high and glorified. May your presence be felt here. Thank you, Father, for your everlasting promise. Thank you 
because you have assured us that you'll be with us today. May all honor and glory be thine. We want to remember the preacher of the hour today. Speak through him, Heavenly Father. Touch him as he breaks the bread of life. May he minister unto us as you have given him instruction, O Father, that we shall be blessed before we live here today through him. Thank you for what you have done and what you are going to do for us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Glories are it to us and grant us thy peace. Ye pray, O Lord. Ye pray, O Lord. He to us and grant us thy peace. Oh, boys and girls man this is so slow good morning boys and girls are you happy to be here today on a bright sabbath morning good morning mommies and daddies good morning oh. mm -hmm. so today our topic says answered prayers. What did I say? Answered prayers. Answered prayers, like in the Niger. Okay. Our story goes like this. You have to pay attention. Ome, look at me. Thank you. No, it's okay. Man. So, who likes summer? Who likes summer? Raise your hand. You do? Me too. So, you know, we're in summer now. So, these people, they were going on a cruise. They went on a boat. They were going to an island far away from the bustling and hustlings of everything in the city. So, everybody went into the boat with all their luggage, you know, when you are traveling, what do you go with? Huh? What's in your luggage when you are going? Yes, yes. And your toys and everything, right? But those ones were adults. They had their clothes, everything they needed, their food, and they all started selling to the island on the way their ship wrecked. Their ship capsided. Everybody on the boat went into the sea because they were on a high sea. So there were two people in there, Peter and Paul. They started swimming and then they swam to the side of the sea where they were safe. Only Peter and Paul were safe in the what? Boat. Only the two of them. So when they got there, in the middle of nowhere, no cell phone, 
no food, no clothing, nobody around, they were lost. So they said, what are we going to do now? It's just the two of us among the many that were in the boat, even the captain, everybody died except the two of them. So they said, we have to separate ourselves and do what and start praying and see who God will do what answer first. So Peter and Paul, they gave themselves some space and they were praying. And Peter started praying, God, I need food. Boom. The angels brought food for him. Remember I said there were what? Two people that did what? Survived the wreck. So Peter prayed and he got the food. He forgot about Paul. He ate the whole food by himself. He said, oh, okay. God answered my prayer. He said, I need water. Boom, he got water. And he drank the whole water by himself, forgetting the other one. He said, what else will I ask for now? Oh, I need to sleep. I need a comfortable place to sleep. He got it. And he went to sleep, forgetting who? Forgetting who? Are you listening? <laughs> I told you there were two people that were saved, Peter and what? Paul. Only one person was getting everything. So he said, everything I ask for, I do what? I get. And the other person was still what? There. Still doing what? Praying. At the long run, he said, oh God, now I need a companion. Boom. The Lord gave him a wife. Somebody he will be talking to and he forgot who? The friend that was in there. That one was still doing what? Praying. And finally he said, oh, since everything I asked for, I get it. It's time for me now to go back to the city. He said, I need a helicopter to go back to the city. Boom, he got the helicopter. He went in there and went in with the companion, forgetting about who? Peter, his friend. So the helicopter was about to move. And then an angel of the Lord said, hold it there. Where do you think you are going without your friend? He said, we asked, they said, okay, you have to pray and ask for everything. And I got everything and I'm leaving. And the angel said, do you think it's your prayers alone that made you get all these things? He said, yes. And the angel said, no, you missed it. Somebody was there praying for God to do what? Answer your prayers and bless you. And when the Lord blessed you, you forgot your friend. We are like that. When we are praying, do you know how many people that prays for us? We don't know. A lot of people pray on our behalf for God to do what? Bless us. So don't think when your prayers are being answered faster than the other person, that is because you are better than him. No. People intercede for other people. And as you are young now, don't tell me you're little kids, you don't know how to pray. You have to every day, every night, pray for one person that is not your daddy or your mommy. You should pray for your daddy and your mommy, but mention one person, maybe from your school, maybe from the church, or you can remember those that in the hospital, little kids like you that has cancer. You don't know them, but you say, Lord, Today, I pray for the kids struggling in the hospital for cancer or what sickness. 
the Lord will hear your prayers speedily. Always remember to pray for somebody. Do not be selfish. Don't tell me you don't know how to pray. Whatever you tell God, he answers. That is good. So, always, always remember to pray for somebody. Whether your daddy, your mommy, anybody, your uncle, your grandma, anybody, always, every day, remember to pray for somebody. That the Lord will heal them, that the Lord will bless them. Some people in your class, you are better than them. You ask the Lord to do what? Help them. Open their brains like you. Don't make fun of them. You don't know who you will meet when you are going anywhere. You can meet anybody. So we have to be nice and always remember to pray in your little corner. Anywhere you are, remember to pray that the Lord will answer your prayers in Jesus' name. So who promised me this, starting from today, you always pray for somebody? Yeah, Ome, very good. Hello. Thank you. We should always remember to pray for somebody. Do not think that is, everything is going on very good for you that you are better than the other person. Somebody somewhere is praying for you so that those blessings will come to you. So starting from today, you made a promise before God, you always remember to pray for somebody. Remember me too, Aunt Uche, remember me. So what did you learn today? Ome, come, come, come. Pray for other people. Very good, very good. Very good, Ome. Come. Learn. Pray, pray for everyone. Okay. So let's pray. Pray for us, okay? All right. Ome, you want to pray? Really? You don't want to start praying for other people now? Come, come. <laughs> okay. Shall we close our eyes? Shall we close our eyes while we pray? Okay. Take your hands off your pockets. Very good. Okay. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Help us to be good. Don't let us be bad. Help, help us to always remember to pray for other people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We, we thank you for letting us, we thank you for letting us have this children's chapel blessingly and safely. Please help us to remember all the people who have died or have cancer. And, and please let us pray for others too, even, even from far away. Amen. We are children of a better land. Children of a better land. Children of a better land. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Offering time. This is the time we are going to participate in worshiping the Lord through our giving. The Lord has blessed us bountifully within this week to and fro, provided job, provided food, provided shelter, provided air, and gave us the PVC to live today. So let's thank him by returning an honest offering unto the Lord.
if you are online, can we get a, our platform? Good. Those here, you can also um, follow what you are seeing on the screen. Just any of those channels, you can send your giving through that. And if you want to give fiscally, we are also ready to receive it. No ka e go nada genti oda ha ha bo e go Jesus oga nara ha nada 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 no ka ha nada ha bo e go Jesus oga nara ha. Abu ego Jesus enti uda ha oh I am a goma oni nyanye nada 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 no kaha nada Abu ego Jesus oga na. Father, we have come before you, and first of all, we are giving our hearts unto you, our hearts full of praises and thanksgiving. May you accept them in Jesus' name. Lord, we are also returning our tithes and offering, free will offering unto you. We also pray, Lord, that you bless them in Jesus' name. For those who cannot do that today, Lord, we pray that you bless them so that they'll do next time. We pray that these offerings will multiply and they'll be used to further your work. And may your blessings come to abide with us as we worship today. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Well, it's uh, an opportunity to welcome you again today. I know you've all been welcomed, uh, but it's a joy to see people come to a physical church, and it takes courage to do it these days. So I want to welcome you, especially again, for being here today at Force Cibo. And I also want to welcome Brother G.K. Rosero at the back bench there, and I see quite a few people that you came with. Can you please just stand up and, and tell us where you're coming from? The church wants to welcome you especially. Please tell us. Ijama, welcome. Happy Sabbath. Amen. Amen. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, a time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright on fear. When the save of earth shall gather over all the and the roll is called up yonder loud we bear. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. I pray all of us will be there in Jesus' name. Amen. Elder and Mrs. ABS Ahutu from Lagos Atlantic Conference. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. 
What a joy. Thank you for joining us today. We are really, really um, happy that you're here. Now, go, let's go back to our preacher. Our speaker today is also not a stranger to us. Uh, he is a family name who's been to this church. And if you remember very well, you would have seen our preacher on the day this church was being dedicated. Um, architect, Elder Emmanuel Dike uh, is an evangelist. Um, and it is, he's an evangelist by calling. And uh, he's also an elder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He is very passionate about the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the president of Adventist Layman Service and Industry, ASI Nigeria, uh, a member of the GC Executive Committee, and above all, he is a child of God. He is married to Ugochi Ezia Kudike, who is my cousin, and the marriage is blessed with three uh, young adults. He is, his best Bible text is that which says, and it came to pass. And it's so beautiful to hear that Bible verse. So if the choir finishes speaking, uh, singing this afternoon, the next voice you'll be hearing will be that of Elder Emmanuel Dike. I'm 
Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. It's good to be here again today. I want to thank the Lord for the grace to speak with my brethren in Facebook Church in New York City. Like uh, our brother said at Achigo's room, I was there the day this church was uh, dedicated. And I give God the glory for the growth I am seeing in this church. I think this is the third time I am preaching in this church. And I want to thank God for what he's doing in the first Hebrew church. And I believe God that he will use you to do greater exploits. I want to thank the, the women and the leadership of first Hebrew church for the uh, great work you did in restoring that our brother who got converted from Islam to uh, Adventism that was almost killed. You were on sports and you did everything. And to God's glory, that brother is a safe hand today. I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all. And uh, I did everything to be in your church fiscal today. And just a few miles away from you, but some logistic reasons, I couldn't be there physical. I want to appreciate you and I want to pray that the spirit of mission in you will continue until we see at the feet of Jesus. I want to thank uh, so many friends who have joined online uh, back home out here in the US. I can see Sister Sharon online. I can see Dr. Opi Yuwampa. I can see uh, uh, Mutu and his uh, wife. Uh, Sister, Joy, uh, Sister Joy, Sister Kogu, Sister Kogu I, I love you all, all and I pray that the Lord will bless each and every one of us. Uh, my wife is seated here with me and she's greeting everybody. Our Happy greatest Sabbath. joy, our greatest joy is when we meet at the feet of Jesus. At the feet of Jesus, there'll be no Zoom, there'll be no pandemic again. It shall be well with each and every one of us. I want to thank Pastor Aaron Do for giving me this great opportunity to use his pulpit and to minister the word. We met just at the GC, during the GC section, and he said, oh, it will be nice you come and be with your brethren in New York church. 
Brothers and sisters, it is a thing of joy to be in your midst. And um, the sermon I have decided to share with us today is end time survivor strategies. End time survivor strategies. Let us pray. Father, I pray that self in me will decrease and Christ in me will increase. That the words that I will speak from now henceforth will be the words that are given to me from above. And that somebody in this congregation will surrender at the feet of Jesus. Somebody listening to us online, listening to us across the world, will give his or her life to Jesus Christ. Because time is up and soon Jesus will appear in his glory. Blessed be your holy name. That your people will see me only as a mad piece, but they will hear Jesus speak to them. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. End time survival strategies. What are we talking about? What is end times? Brothers and sisters across the world, even in our church, so much is happening in line with fulfillment of prophecies in line with the end time landmarks. So today, you hear people talk about homosexuality, you talk about lesbianism, transgender, and all sorts. Oh, you go back home. Those days, it used to be like a taboo to talk about labels in the church. But today, it is just there, resonating everywhere both in the church at home, even in the church here. And we talk about fashion. So many people have left the lifestyle of the average Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, we want to be like the people of the world. And we want to do things the way the people of the world do it. And I say to you, these things are end time landmark. Oh, back home, you would have been aware of all that is going on. Is it the killings? Is it the banditry? Is it the unknown gunmen? Is it the herdsmen who are doing everything to take over your land and my land? Is it the political schemes that are going on everywhere? And I say to you, is it the issue of tribalism that have taken center stage in our life? These things are things that have to do with end time. And I say to you, as we near the end of time, these things are going to happen. So is it famine? Is it unemployment? Is it health challenges? Things are all on the increase. Brothers and sisters, I need to tell you, Jesus may appear anytime soon because the landmarks are almost there. Are we talking about many departing from the faith, leaving the church? Are we talking about hatred even in the church? Love of many are growing cold. And so the message I want to preach to us this day is in the midst of these situations, how do we survive? What are the strategies that God's children will use and they will remain together? And before I go into this message, I want to tell you a story I just read two days ago. And that story touched me greatly. And these things are happening both in the church. Back here where you are, it is racism. It is in the church, it is in the world, and all that. Let me read this story to you. Pastor Abraham Adeshea is, um, pa Abraham Adeshea is a 90-year-old man lying on his sick bed in the hospital. He envisaged the end has come. He beckoned to Rasak, his 60-year-old son, to come close that he had something to tell him. And the following conversation ensued between him and his son. But the Senior said to his son, he said, my son, I have seen the extent of hatred you have for the Igbos. And I've also noticed that you despise them a lot. And Rasak said, Baba me, they overdo things, oh Jare, and this has made me develop hatred for them. And I will use every opportunity to deal with them. But sir, let's leave that issue and concentrate on your recovery. Pastor I said to him, he said, Rasak, my son, you must relate with every man as an individual, not in consideration of tribal ethnicity. And I say to our brethren in this church, 
And I say to our brethren listening to me everywhere in the world, if you find yourself in tribalism or in racism, do away with it because it has nothing to do with your salvation. I feel the end is near and I need to reveal a long held secret to you. Padesia is telling Rasak his son. And Rasak said, I don't think I can ever like the Igbos, but Babami, what is the secret? And Padesia said, 60 years ago, while I was still working with the railways in Enugu, I had a friend and a neighbor. His name is Mazi Okeke, who was very close and good to me. Mazi Okeke and the wife died in a motor accident three months after they had a boy, a boy child. And I couldn't help but adopt that little child as my own. Myself and your late mother took care of the boy like ours and ensured he lacked nothing. That child is you. You are really not an Adesanya, but an Okeke. And my friend, my and Ignatius Okeke is your father. You are not a Yoruba, but Igbo. Rasak takes a deep breath and walks out of the room. The moral lesson. Everyone desires to be judged and defined by the composition of his intellect and whatever he brings to bear in his social and communal relationship. Where Rasak, who hated Debo, suddenly realized that he hated himself all the while. Tribe consciousness rests in the bosom of the unexposed. Every tribe and people have the good and the bad and the ugly. Brothers and sisters, what do we have to survive the challenges we have in this time? It is God's word, the Bible, that reveals Christ. It is God's word that strengthens our faith. It is God's word that unfolds truth. It is God's word that exposes error. It is his word that prepares us for Satan's fairest temptations. God reveals himself through his word. That is why Satan hates it. That is why all the powers of hell want to destroy God's word. That is why leaving the church today, in the church today, many people are beginning to paint, God says the Lord, and they want to paint it to suit their situation. And many have forgotten to know, I remember, that the Lord says, if you add to the book of this, if you add to the words of this book, or you remove from it, there are their consequences to you. Brothers, if anyone was caught in the midst of titanic struggle between the forces of good and evil, it was Apostle Paul. He shared the eternal truths that will enable us to stand fast in the worst of times. They are Apostle's attitude of being. They blustered his faith. They encouraged his heart. They lifted his spirit in the challenges of life. All the demons of hell cannot destroy the humble child of God who embraced these principles. They are timeless and they are life-changing. And I want to share these principles with you today. One, live a life of trust. We find the first eternal truth in Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. Principle number one. To stand fast in the worst of times, we must trust God. In the times where you are not sure of this economy, in the time where you are not sure of your husband, many husbands today have left their marital vows. Many women today are no, longer unfaith are no longer faithful to their marital vows. Friends, where there is no trust, there is no spiritual strength. Left on our own, we are totally incapable of battling the evil one. And I say to you today, you cannot overcome these weaknesses if you want to do it all alone. We are not sufficient. God is. Our sufficiency is from him. The Christian life from beginning to end is one of trust and dependence, not one of self-sufficiency. We lose faith when we feel sufficient on our own. The less sufficient we feel, the more we must trust God and the stronger we become. Brothers and sisters, our righteousness is not sufficient to save us. He is. It is God who justifies. Romans chapter 8, verse 33. Our strength is not sufficient to deliver us. He is. The Lord knows how to deliver the ungodly. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Our good works are not sufficient to satisfy us. His are, I am the Lord who satisfies them. Ezekiel 20, 12. 
Our power is not sufficient to resurrect our bodies. His is, I am resurrection and the life. John 11, 25. We cannot make ourselves immortal. He can. I give them eternal life. John 10, 28. Brothers and sisters, our whole being rests on God. And in him, there is fullness of joy. Throughout life, our intimacy in our inadequacy is Christ's sufficiency. At times, we all cry out from the depth of our being. I am too weak to cope with life challenges. I am incapable of facing the devil's temptation. I am unable to handle my daily pressures. I'm just not sufficient for all the stressors that are rapidly coming at all at me all at once. In all circumstances, God is our sufficiency. And I say to you today, there is a good news for you. When we have stress at work, God is our sufficiency. When there are problems in our families, God is our sufficiency. Am I talking to somebody today whose marriage is going through times? God is our sufficiency. And God will restore your marriage today in the name of Jesus. When we have financial problems, God is our sufficiency. Oh, yes, during this period of COVID, many have lost their jobs. To eat three square meals is a problem. And those of you who are here, every day you get phone calls back home. Oh, we haven't paid school fees. We haven't paid rent. We haven't eaten. And some of you even had to borrow to send money back home. Brothers and sisters, I say to you today, when we have financial problems, God is our sufficiency. When we care for elderly parents, God is our sufficiency. When we cope with loneliness, God is our sufficiency. Are you a young lady? You are up to the age of marriage and that good man is not coming. I pray to you today. I pray on your behalf today. God will meet you at the point of your need. And until then, God is our sufficiency. When we are challenged at school, God is our sufficiency. When we feel insufficient, incapable, inadequate, God is our sufficiency. Friends and, friends and saints of God, Professor Marilyn Herbong certainly discovered the principles of trusting absolutely when he felt inadequate. Marilyn taught English at Kenny State College. One semester to begin class, she had all the students write statements about themselves. Here is what one student, whose name is K. Young Kang, wrote. I think English is a ball. My main hobby is harassing stupid teachers, and English teachers are the stupidest of all. The natural response to a comment like this is either to become defensive or to withdraw emotionally from the individual completely. Throughout the initial class period, Guan sneakered, mumbled under his breath, dropped books on the floor, and squealed in his seat. He was extremely disruptive. Uh, disruptive. That night, Marilyn, a committed Christian, acknowledged before God that she was incapable of dealing with this problem. She sought Christ's sufficiency. And I say to you today, whatever did that challenge you are having, seek the face of God and God will meet you at the point of your need. While she prayed, she was impressed to see Christ in Quan. How? He was not even a Christian. She continued to ask Christ for his sufficiency to meet his, this challenge. In the following weeks, Quan often yammed conspicuously in class and made comments about how boring the class was. To upset Marilyn, he sprinkled his first essay with obscene language. He also monopolized classroom discussion by arguing with other students. One day, Marilyn read a poem in class titled Atwitted by Edwin Markham. Before she read it, she said, this poem is dedicated to Kwan. The poem says, he drew a circle which shot me out. Heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. After class one day, Juan asked, why don't you just give up on me? Then he confided, you can't let people get too close to you. I play a game in which I try to hurt them before they hurt me. I have been rejected so many times that I can't stand it anymore. A young lady told me recently that he would not want to get married because he has been so deceived. He has been so disappointed. He has been so, you know, when he sees men, fear comes into her. But listen now, and there is a lesson to learn from Marilyn. On his final essay, Quan wrote these words. 
There are three kinds of teachers. Those who are interesting but stupid. Those who are intelligent but boring. Those who are both boring and stupid like my English teacher. When Marilyn read it, tears came to her eyes. She felt all of her effort had failed. Then she prayed, Jesus, be my sufficiency. I have invested so much energy on this young man. I am emotionally drained. Oh yes, yeah, sometimes you put so much, even in your own child, even in some families, even in friends, and you're not getting results. Do not give up. Marilyn didn't give up. And look at what happened. When Marilyn handed Juan's paper back, she began to cry and simply commented, Juan, I can't play emotional mind game. You matter to me. I care for you as a person. I am concerned. Then she walked away. While she was sitting in her office and crying, Juan walked in and placed a note in her hand. It reads, I am sorry. I hurt you. No one has ever cared for me before. If this has something to do with your Christ, I want to know him today. Oh, friends and saints of God's people, I want to know your Christ. Let people see my lifestyle. Let people see your lifestyle in the place you walk, in the neighborhood where you live, in the place, even in church. Let people see your lifestyle and glorify our God who is in heaven. And let people see your lifestyle and say, listen, I want to know about your Jesus. In all of life in other places, we must trust. The more incapable we feel, the more we need to trust. The more inadequate our, our sufficiency, the more we need his sufficiency. The gates of hell will not destroy the child of God who hangs on in simple trust. Christ is our sufficiency. So trust in Jesus Christ. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the challenges you are passing. I don't know what the devil is playing in your life. I say to you today, when you trust in God and you hold on to him, he will meet you at the point of your need. Oh, live a life of courage. Second antidote for end time survival strategies. Live a life of courage. Now we come to the second in the Tiffany of survival attitude. The Paul apostle offers us. His first century work and words speak, speak to a generation living in the 21st century. They were important then, but they are much more important now. Here are his hopeful words. Since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose hearts. We are hard pressed on every side. Oh yes, the brother who read the Bible message did a good job. But I say to you, in the book of uh, um, uh, 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 Second Corinthians, where we have that Bible reading, there is a message for me and you. Second Corinthians one, six and seven. Second Corinthians chapter four, uh, I will take one, I will take seven, six, I will take seven, eight, and nine. And it reads, he said, therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose hearts. And then it goes in six, he said, for it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in eighteen vessel that the excellencies of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Oh, friends, I don't know where you are going through. I don't know what you are going through. But the Lord is saying to you today, you will receive persecution, but you will be an overcomer. Oh, yes, since we have this ministry. In other words, all the stressors and pressures of life didn't cause him and didn't cause us to become discouraged. Principles number two, to stand fast in the wars of times, we must hang on to our courage. In Christ, we can have a confidence, positive attitude. Christ's grace enables us to cope with all of life from their rebel stressors. What did the apostle mean when he said, we are perplexed. Certainly, even for him, life constraint is sheer of unanswered questions. There are many things we simply cannot understand, but that need not destroy our faith. What we do know is far more significant than what we do not know. 
And yes, the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, reveal things belong to us. But those things that are not revealed belongs to God. And I say to you today, stop worrying. Lay them at the feet of Jesus and it shall be well with you. The one who has changed our heart is more important than the unanswered questions in our mind. We may be perplexed, pressed, or stressed, and even persecuted, but we need not lose heart. Here is why. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. The great heroes of faith lived lives of incredible courage, moral courage. Joseph didn't lose heart when his brothers betrayed him. This quarter we talked and we studied about the, uh, Joseph. Even in the midst of betrayal, Joseph could forgive his brothers. I don't know who is listening to me today. I don't know who have hurt you so much. And you say, no, I have written him off. I will never have anything to do with him again. And some people go to their stand and they say, over my dead body. Like the story I told you at the beginning, the story, the story of uh, Pa Adesanya's son. Oh, for him, the Igbos were a write-off. <laughs> but he didn't know he was an Igbo. So sometimes we kill ourselves. We fight ourselves. Oh, Joseph had a situation. Even when his brother sold him, they didn't know they would meet him again in life. Not to meet him as a governor. So that man you are underrating today, that woman you think is nobody today, don't close the gap. You may meet him upstairs. And when you meet him upstairs, he is now the chief executive. So when you do things, don't close the door because there is going to be a second meeting. Oh, yes. Joseph didn't lose heart when his brothers betrayed him. Moses didn't lose heart when wandering in the wilderness. Elisha didn't lose heart when thousands of enemy soldiers surrounded him. Daniel didn't lose heart despite being a captive in a foreign land. Oh, yes. You all have strangers in this land. One day soon, one day soon, all of us, we are strangers in this world. We will be going home to see our God. So when you are doing things here, when you are doing things here, don't do it as if there is no tomorrow. When you are doing things here, don't close the door. Some people are so mean. Peter didn't lose that when he was condemned by the guilt of his sin in denying his Lord. And though stoned, shipwrecked, and imprisoned, the apostle Paul didn't lose heart. So don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the disappointment you are having. I don't know the challenges you are having in life. The Lord is saying to you today, don't lose hope. The Lord is saying to you today, there is an opening somewhere and God will open that door for you. All you need to do is to trust. We can avoid losing hearts only if our inward man is being renewed day by day. When God's people, Israel, wandered in the wilderness, manna fell from heaven each day to supply their needs. God provided their daily food. Each morning, except on the Sabbath, the Israelites gathered the manna. God gave them sufficient for that day. If they miss gathering it each morning, they went hungry. Get that right now. It was only on, the, on that Sabbath day, on the Friday, that they were asked to pick double. One for that Friday and then for the Sabbath. But every other day, when you pick double, it will get spoiled. So it was a daily relationship with the Lord. It was a daily renewal with the Lord. Every heart holds a hidden hunger to know God. This inner longing can be satisfied in only one way. Jesus said, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus whom you have sent. John 17, 3. We get to know God through his word, the Bible. God offers us nourishment in his word, but like the manna, today, today's supply is inadequate for tomorrow. We must eat it every day. Is somebody hearing me here? Oh, out here you can be too busy with work so you can pay the bills, you can get things going, you can still send money to people back home and all that. And you think that the Bible you have read on Friday or the one you read on Sabbath day will take you through the week. No, the Lord is saying, have a daily relationship with me. 
And the only way you can relate with the Lord and commune with the Lord is when you open the pages of the Bible. And the General Conference had made a provision that every day you can read a chapter of the Bible. So if you cannot do it through another way, you can join the Revival and Reformation team and be reading the Bible every day. Spend 10 to 20 minutes with the Lord every day in prayer and in Bible study. Then, your daily needs will be met. There is one prime way to building strong faith, one way to build courage, one way not avoid losing heart. We must live in the presence of God. Robert Wong lived in the presence of God, even in a communist prison. And I need you to listen to this young man's story. His inner person was renewed every day. He was in solitary confinement for four years. He was imprisoned or in labor camp for 15 years. During much of that time, his family wasn't allowed to visit him. And his letters home were restricted to only 100 Chinese character a month. Robert remembered, Robert remembered that the him Give me the Bible was number 115 in the Chinese seminar. He wrote him 1115 in one of his letters home. When his mother received the letter, she puzzled over that cryptic line until she concluded that Robert was trying to tell her that he wanted a copy of the Bible. At this time, the authorities were allowing Robert's family to visit him monthly. When family members visited their imprisoned relatives, they often brought large bars of soap for them. So Mrs. Wong hollowed out one of these bars of homemade soap and carefully concealed a small New Testament Bible in it. The Bible, the precious book of God, sustained the robot for days, weeks, and months. He drew courage from each page. His inner person was renewed day after day. Heroes of faith down through the centuries have drawn courage from God's word. That is how they have not lost heart. Kore Tembum tells the story of a financial crisis in her father's watch making shop. She kept the books and knew they hadn't received enough money to pay the bills. Then an extremely wealthy businessman entered the shop and looked at one of the most expensive watches. After examining it, he decided to buy it. He gave Kore's father Mr. Timboom, the money. In passing, he said, I want to buy this watch because I have a very expensive one that just, that, that, that just doesn't work. I took it to a young watch maker in town, but he couldn't do anything to fix it. And then Mr. Timboom said, can I see the watch? He inquired. In a moment, he had it running perfectly. Mr. Timboom then said, you won't be needing this new watch. Yours will work just fine now. And he returned the man's money. Oh, friends, the daughter who was with him, who knew the financial crisis they were going through, she said, when she overheard the conversation and her heart sank to her feet, immediately she lost heart. The courage ran away like a dog running from his master. When the potential customer left, she exclaimed, Papa, how could you do this? You know how much we needed the money? Her father replied, courage, have courage, trust in the Lord. And I want to say to you today, do not cut corners because there are hard times. Remain steadfast. Remain an apostle of Christ. Continue to do what is right, even though heavens will fall. This time, this end time period, Calls for men and women who we call him by his right name. Men and women who are men and women of honor, men of integrity, men of character, men who will not, because of tribalism, take wrong positions. Men who we call sin by his right name, even though the heavens fall. Friends, in the presence of the Lord, our courage is renewed. In the presence of the Lord, our strength is restored. In the presence of the Lord, our faith is revived. In the presence of the Lord, our hope is rekindled. And I want to say to you that Mr. Ten Boom, that simpler act he did opened more doors for him. And God will open more doors for you today. Be a man and a woman of integrity. Do not sell your birthright because of porridge. 
live a life of hope and joy. Third item Paul talked about on our end times of our strategies. Paul concluded his thought on end time living with these walls. We do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. <laughs> For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 18. Principle number three, to stand fast in the worst of times, we must look to God, look to his promises, and look to him for the future. As Christians, we look beyond what is to what will be. We look beyond today to tomorrow. We look beyond the night to the morning. We look beyond the present to the eternal. We look beyond our tears to the joy. We look beyond sickness to health. We look beyond earthly poverty to heavenly riches. We look beyond heartache to happiness. We look beyond earth problem to heaven solution. And I say to you today that God has a solution to your problems. There was a family in Thailand. There was a family in Thailand. This family, were, they were doing very well. They lived in a, a three-bedroom home, beautiful home in a choice neighborhood. But something happened that the father of the house lost his job. And the economy of the family turned around, turned around. And there was nothing to do. There was no way out of it. So after a period, they moved out of that choice apartment and moved into one room apartments, very tiny room apartments. And while they stayed in this tiny room, things have changed drastically. And they had two children, a girl who was eight years and his brother who was six years. And in this process of this challenge, the devil came knocking. What did the devil do? The little boy in that house had a brain tumor. And when they went and did the medical, they could not afford it. They could not afford it. And so each morning when the family meet in prayer, they said it will take a miracle for this little boy, for their boy to be healed. It will take a miracle. It will take a miracle. And they keep praying for that miracle. They keep talking about miracles. So one day, this little girl had this place, uh, where, what do you call it here now? Uh, the, the picky bank, he had a picky bank. We are when, when people visit their home, they give them money, put it in the picky bank. He was putting money in that, in that picky bank. And one day she went and counted this her money. And the money got to $10, nine cents. So she took $9 out of that money and went to a pharmacy in the neighborhood. Went to a pharmacy in the neighborhood. And he told the pharmacist, he said, I want to buy that medicine that is called Miracle. And the pharmacist said, Miracle? He said, yes. He said, no, I, we don't sell any medicine called miracle. But he said every day, my parents are saying that it is only miracle that can heal my brother. So I want that medicine. If the money I have given you, if my $9, uh, uh, nine cents is not enough, I still have money back home. I will go and bring all I have in my piggy bank so you can sell that miracle tablet for me. And while this young girl, little girl in her innocence was telling this story to the pharmacist, there was a man at the back of the pharmacist. And so the man came and said, so what is the problem of your little brother? He said, well, I don't know, but what I know is that my parents says that the only solution is miracle. And I have come to buy the miracle. So this man was worried and bothered. And he decided and said, okay, you take me home. Let me see your parents. And he met the parents of this little girl. And when he met the parents, 
He asked them what the problem was. They gave her the gave him the medical papers that showed what the challenge was. And friends and saints of God, this man is one of the best surgeons in that city. And the man said, well, I will have you come to my clinic. He gave them a date and they came. And that surgery was conducted and it was successful. And that little boy got healed. Amen. Just for nine dollars, nine cents. Miracle. And I say to you today, God will bring a destiny helper to you. God will bring a miracle your way today. God will do the unimaginable in your life today. God will open doors that no man can shut. All you need to do is to trust God. Don't be like the people of the world in the time in these times. Don't be like the people of the world in these times. Don't be like them. Don't compromise your position. Don't let anything betray your standard. Don't let anything distract you from the mark. And I say to you, brothers and sisters, it won't be long. Jesus is coming home very soon. And I say it with all amount of certainties because I believe the Bible. I believe in the spirit of prophecy. And you believe it that we will sit in the floor of our church and people will be debating about lesbianism, homosexuality, uh, uh, gay marriage, and all that, and all that stuff. As it was in the day of Noah. Brothers and sisters, too many things are happening in our time, pointing to the fact that Jesus is on his way home. And the only solution to it is to stick to Jesus, is to hook to Jesus. We look at what we see instead by faith. We grasp the eternal joy we cannot see. Brothers and sisters, we must build our faith. Stop looking at the things of this world. Stop looking at, at look, don't get me wrong. Money is good. I, I work hard to make money. And I know we need to work hard to make money. But let not in your pursuit of trying to get money, you lose the mark. Don't let in your pursuit of doing two, three jobs, you now become a Sabbath, Sabbath uh, 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 Adventist. Brothers and sisters, we must have a daily relationship with Jesus Christ. We must have a daily renewal with him. We must commune with him in Bible study, in prayer, and in thanksgiving. Here then are the apostles and times of our attitude. We are not sufficient, but Christ is. Live a life of trust. Dwell in the presence of God. In the difficulties of life, faith is trusting God as a friend, knowing for certain that he will never do us any harm. Brothers and sisters, you will lose nothing when you trust God. You will lose nothing when you surrender totally to God. You will lose nothing because our God is an all-sufficient God. I tell you with all amount of honesty and commitment that when you trust everything to God and you do the works of your hand, not what we see any, everywhere today, you know, people will tell you prosperity, prosperity, and they tell you, oh, just come, just come, just come. And then on Monday, when you're supposed to be in your workplace, you are in church praying and fasting. On Tuesday, when you're supposed to be looking for daily bread, you are in church praying and fasting. And all through the week, up through the month, you are in church praying and fasting. Brothers and sisters, help will only come when you have a product and you have a service to give. When you have a product, God will bless the works of your hands. That's what the Lord says. I am not saying today that Adventists and Christians shouldn't work hard. Work hard. Trust in God. Pray fast that God will bless the works of your hand. We do not lose hearts. Live a life of courage. God beckons you into his presence for a dose of new courage. Courage is tenacity to hang on and never give up. Knowing God's strength will get you through. I pray that God's strength will get you through your challenges today. There are many of us who are going through difficult times. There are many of us who are going through challenges with being faithful to our spouses. There are many of us who are going through hard time by not doing what we are supposed to do. 
Oh, by there are many of us who are going challenges with telling lies, with adultery, with fornication, with stealing all forms of it. Today, the Lord is calling you and he's calling me and he says, hold on to me, the author and finisher of your faith and it shall be well with you. There are many of us who are still having challenges with the fashions and the things of the world. Oh yes, friends, it's good to be fashionable, but as Seventh-day Adventists, we talk about temperance. We talk about temperance. And so we have to be in the middle, not at the extreme of the other way or the extreme of the other way. Do not be carried away by the things of this world because surely all these things we are seeing here today will soon come to pass. But one thing that will not come to pass is our relationship with Jesus Christ. We do not look at the things which are seen. Live a life of hope and joy. Look into the promises of God. Vision is the ability to look beyond today to tomorrow. It is seeing the future through God's eye. It is the ability to grasp the reality of eternity today. God wants to give you an extra dose of faith, courage, and vision for all the challenges you face. Why not ask him for it today? As I end this sermon, I end with this last story. When I read this story, it touched my heart and I was moved by this story. You know what happened? Just like you have in Mahata, those of you living in New York City, or in, 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 in Marina, Lagos, and all that, there was this busy place too, Mandela in the Philippines, very busy place. You can drive for three hours, you will not have a space to park your car. So there was this little boy, little boy, about 14, 15 years old. So what he does is that he gets into the park in the morning <coughs> and get a space, pay for space. And when people come and he looks at you and he thinks that um, you can pay him, he will give you the space. So this day came. One young man drove in and had driven for two, three times. He couldn't find his space. So he called him and said, come and take this place. But you have to pay me for it. He said, okay, that's fine. And then he said, in addition, I'm going to hang here to watch after your car. He said, okay, that's not a problem. I watch it, you watch it, but I'm going to walk. And I won't be out until evening. And they were talking about morning. He said, I will wait for you. And so this day, that evening, that boy handed over the space and he packed his car. The young man went to work. And about five o'clock, he came out and pressed the button on his car and the car opened. And this little boy went close to it and said, yes, I'm here. Oh, he said, yeah, you've done a good job. He said, it's time to pay me. And the man gave him some money. And when he gave him the money, he turned to him and said, man, this car looks beautiful. Are you the one that bought this car? Is this car your own? He said, yes, it's, it's, it's my car. He said, wow, you must be a big guy to buy this beautiful car. He said, well, actually, this car was given to me by my brother. He said, can you give me a ride in your car? So this man looked at this street boy, dirty looking boy with this level of boldness. He said, so where are you going to? He told him where he was going to. And it was like the Ajegunle of Lagos or the Diobu of Potaka, those of you who know these areas. And he said, okay, can you give me a ride? And I said, okay, you come in. And the man went down the car, and for about five minutes, the bad orders and the boy had gone out, and he went up the car, and they were driving. I said, look, sir, can I be a brother like your brother to my brother? He said, what do you mean? He said, I will want my brother 
to have a feel of what I have seen today, to ride in a car like this. So say, where's your brother? Say so his brother is home. That his brother is home. And the guy looked at him again and said, you want your brother, you want to be a brother like your brother, like my brother to your brother? He said, yes. So the end of the story is that the guy took him and they got there. He went and carried his brother. His brother was two years older than him, but this time he was learning. He had an accident at a young age because the family could not afford to do anything and he became lame. And he brought his brother into the car. He said, what happened? He said, well, that's my brother. He's lame, but let him have a feel of what life is all about. The brothers and sisters, through this man, that his brother had a surgery that led to his recovery. I want to challenge you today to be a brother to somebody, to be a sister to your, brother, to your sister or to your brother, to look after one person, to be a burden bearer, to look after somebody, to be in place of another person who is going through challenges. It could be in your church. It could be counseling. It could be financial support. It could be any form of help. Stand in the gap for somebody. And Jesus will stand in the gap for you. Amen. May the Lord bless somebody today. May the Lord open an imaginable doors for you. And may the Lord meet you, you, you at the point of your need. Amen. That young lady, that young man who is going through times, no job. I pray that the Lord will visit you today. Amen. Oh, that young man, that old man, that old woman that have what the world, the medical world will call terminal disease. I pray today that the Lord will visit you Amen. and a miracle will take place in your life. As we look to the end of time, as we prepare for Jesus' soon return, hold on to your faith. Remain faithful. Know that it won't be long. But in all of it, Jesus will see us through. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Shall we say amen again? I want to believe that we are highly blessed by this sermon. Um, Edda, I pray that the Lord will continue to bless your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we rise as we close the divine service with the use of Ezra 632? Six three two as the edge. Yeah.
benediction our Lord and our God the creator of the heavens and the universe our heart we go on singing until the day we see you face to face Amen. Father this day we pray that you will visit and meet each and every one of us at the point of our needs Father, I pray today that in these end times, you will send a destiny helper our way. Amen. Father, I pray, dear Lord, that Jesus will stand in the gap for us. Amen. I pray that you will visit each and every one of us, that our hands will be strong in you, and that we will hold you in faith, and that we will remain faithful to you until the end of times. Amen. And that when the trumpet will sound, and Jesus will appear in the class of heaven. I pray, dear Lord, that all that have listened to me today and all that will listen to this message and all that are worshiping you in truth and in spirit, we shall see you in glory. Amen. We shall meet at the supper of the Lamb. We shall meet where we will never depart again. Father, I pray today that you bless somebody in this church. Amen. I pray today that you will heal somebody in this church. Amen. I pray today that those who are going through challenges, you know these challenges, healing will take place. Amen. Restoration will take place. Amen. Redemption will take place. Amen. And when next we meet their Lord, if Christ tarries, it shall be testimony time. Amen. Until then, our hearts we go on singing. Amen. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, in the coming of the Lord, we have this hope down, but we in our heart. Oh, in the coming of the Lord, we have this faith and Christ the Lord in power, faith in the promise of His reign, we believe the time. 
Let's try to reflect on what we have heard this afternoon. Let's reflect on the strategies of these end times that we're in. Let's pray for the Lord to be our sufficiency in times like this. Have you checked your emotions? Are you emotionally drained? Ask the Lord at this time to fill you up. What kind of life are you living in times like this? Is it a life that is reflecting light that others can see? Joshua reminded them that after all that God has done for them and all the noise they made and all the funny This is a time for us to play for a life of courage. That the Lord should strengthen us and give us courage at these times. Let's pray for God to be a miracle in our lives. Let's also pray that the God should open doors that cannot be shut. And finally, let's pray that the Lord will stand in the gap as we go through the times like this. A kind and loving Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity for the words we have heard this afternoon, the words that will prepare us as we go through the difficult terrain of these end times. We have prayed that you give us courage, that you will be a light that will continue to shine on our path as we go. Give us also the strength. Even the things that we see, may they not distract us, but also, but also make us steadfast, you know, as we stand in your presence at all times. Take glory, mighty Lord, because you lead us through now and through the coming week that you show us and continue to guide us all through the week. And that you will also reunite us here next week as we gather again. Thank you, mighty Jehovah, for all these blessings, because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm sorry, everyone. I just want to use this time so that we can use this and pray for a sister. Uh, there is something in the community. And when it happens in the community, it also reflects in the church. Sister, can you come up, please? We have a sister who needs God's healing. And we can no longer keep it behind or hide it. We have to bring it to the throne of God. Our sister, Nene Edith Ahanamba. We want God to come and take care of her. We want God to come and heal her. There is nothing our Lord cannot do. 
Sister Emma, please. A special prayer for our sister. Nene, ah, number. Goals and souls pray in the morning. Goals and souls pray after you. I souls pray in the heat. So keep your heart into oh, oh, and souls pray you God and pray you in the morning God and pray you Says prayer in the evening. So keep your heart in tune. Let us just, I'm just going to be speaking out why you, you are in agreement in this prayer. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, the Lord of the Sabbath, Jehovah is your name. Your name is Elohim, the one who creates and recreates. You are Ebenezer, our help. You are our bridge over troubled waters of this life. With you, all things are possible. I want to bless you in the name of your church and the name of Jesus Christ. Because you are Jehovah Jeshurun, the one who rises upon the heavens to bring us help. The church stands in need of help. We stand in need of help. And you said, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will answer and show you great and mighty things. And before you call, why are you asking that you will show up? And time after time and after time again, Lord, you have showed up in the midst of the crucibles of this life. So the hour has come, Father, to, for you to step in. The prophet Jeremiah calls you a stepping God. My Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, kneeling before you, standing before you, bowing before you, those online on Facebook, YouTube, and those in the sanctuary, it's your children, your church, your blood, blood church. Father, the hour has come again. Your name, at the mention of your name, people that were died days before, they woke up from there and started running into the village. So how much more now? One, somebody that is breathing. And so we call upon the God of miracles. The man of God preached that the child will be healed only by a miracle. So we need a miracle, Jehovah. The Lord of the Sabbath is the Lord of miracles. So from the heavens of heavens, Father, from the heavens of heavens, give us a miracle. Give us a miracle. Elohim, give us a miracle. Jehovah Rapha, give us a miracle. Hey, scripture says that you heal the broken heart and bind every wound. My father, if that lady have given up hope, we have hope. Hope, blessed assurance that Jesus is able, that you're more than able. Yes, Lord, you are able. So on this very platform today, Lord, we call upon you and we bless you for the greatness of your power to heal and the power of your greatness to raise the dead back to life. Therefore, in faith in agreement with my brothers and sisters, we call her spirit back to life in the name of Jesus Christ. We call her out from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. We speak to every organ, every tissue, every fiber in her body. Receive life and live. Receive the word of God and be made whole. The woman said, I'm here, and Jesus, you said, be, you are made whole. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, show up and show off that the earth will know that we serve a risen Savior and that you are in the world today. Nene, wherever you are, wherever sickness has taken, we call you back from death to life. We call you back.
to our midst. We call you back to the church. We call you back to the family in the name of Jesus Christ. My father, you are the God that answers prayer. The psalmist says, hey, that God is God that answers prayer. Father, you have answered many prayers. In fact, Paul says you are the God of exceeded expectations. May our expectations be exceeded in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, moving forward, as she drinks water, we sanctify that water with the blood of Jesus Christ. Whatever they put, we sanctify it with the blood of Jesus. We consecrate the air in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare wherever she is a Holy Ghost. Because in your presence, no sickness stands. Father, the story has changed already. We are vowing in your name, God. We too, all things are possible. That's what I know. The Bible said that when the crowd gathered, that the power of God was present to heal. And you healed them all. Jehovah. So you did everything right. The people that were almost dead came back to life. So for today, Father, you have healed her already. So from this moment henceforth, we are going to be praising you for the miracle of healing. She has been healed by the power of the almighty God. The creative power of God. Uh -uh. The creative power of God, we speak it into her. Wherever she is, Father, we place a demand that angels move fast into that place in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything is lining up for her healing to the glory of this God, the God that not trails. Moses said that this God, he makes good on your promises, and these promises are sure they are yes and they are amen. So we thank you in advance. We advance our gratitude for the healing. Cancer, we cut you to the root and tentacles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, you spoke to the victory. The next morning, Peter showed up. You showed up with Peter. Peter said, Father, what did you do? The tree is dead. And you said, if you have faith, Father, we have faith today. We have faith to cause cancer cells, to cause everything tumor in the name of Jesus Christ. We have faith. We are children of God, ordained of God, called by God, anointed and appointed for such a time as this. We have faith. Our sister shall live and not die. And as her days are, so shall her strength be. In the name of Jesus Christ. My Bible said that you heal the broken heart and bind every wound. Whatever it is, is already bound in the name of Jesus Christ. So we release her to go and flourish. From this death, it's a day of flourishing. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name that is above sickness, above cancer, above tumor, above what the doctors say and what they did not say. So in this place, we give you all the glory. And we give you all the praise, Father. We are not that our God is too great. He's a faithful God. You have not prayed us before. We have prayed for so many cases and you brought them back to life. This is not a different case. It's the norm for us. This is a miracle center. And on this day, Lord, we have declared our healing. And heaven has already stamped it. So we stand here to give you all the glory and all the praise, all the worship, and everything that is praiseworthy be ascribed unto your majesty. For we have prayed in faith, humbly, Father, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Well, again, um, Elder DK, we want to thank you on behalf of our pastor. He's not here today, uh, but I'm sure he's going to watch this video. And we are thankful that um, we were able to uh, have you again today. And uh, what a beautiful someone that you have given here. This is not your last time. And we're looking forward to another time when you will be around and also talk to us. So thank you again. And where's Ugochi? Let me see her face. It's about brothers and sisters. You're muted. <laughs> Can we see your wife? But I can see you. <laughs> Ugo, Ugo, uh, <laughs> Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Nice to see you. I'm glad you came with him this time. Yes, yeah, so thank yeah, you. Yes, so thank you. May we all remain blessed in Jesus' name.
Amen. 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 That's that's my sister. <laughs> thank you. God bless you. Watching God's <laughs> okay, our sister, that's all about our sister. Okay. <laughs> so thank you again, Ella DK. Nice to have you. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. That's all.